In this video, we are going to create this app using HTML and CSS and vanilla JavaScript and we'll get the weather information from the weather API and we'll deploy it on the Netlify app. We'll be using uh, the open weather map API. So we'll be using this API and spe specifically one call API uh, for this project. Uh, so this project will be uh, is completely uh, responsive site. So you can see that uh, it supports uh, say horizontal sc scrolling and all those things included. So if you're interested, continue watching and we'll, we'll create this right now. So let's get into the code now. So I have opened uh, Visual Studio code and here we'll create three files. First we'll create the index.html file. Then uh, we'll create the uh, styles style.css file and we'll create the uh, javascript file so it will be script.js so we'll be using these three files uh, to create that website so i have installed uh, emmet in this uh, visual studio code so when i do uh, exclamation mark and enter it will give me a, a kind of like a boilerplate so here i'll change the title to weather app so first let's uh, see if we are able to uh, load the HTML. So we'll be using live server. So I'll, I have written hello world uh, in an H1 tag and have saved it. So I, I'll right click and I'll select open with live server. On doing that, uh, it will create, open a new window and it, the title will be other app and there is an H1 tag with hello world. So I'll just divide the screen into two parts so that we can uh, work simultaneously and I'll close this sidebar as well. So now uh, we need to link the uh, style.css and the script.js file. So we'll just link CSS. So this will uh, link the CSS file and below in the body at the end type script and the SRC will be script.js okay now we have linked the style.css and the script.js to the html file uh, now let's start uh, building building our site so first we'll just remove this hello world and we'll create a div with a class of container and in the in this container we'll have the current info uh, which will be the date and time uh, the other uh, info on the side so we'll just do that so the current info will be uh, all the content in here all these content will be inside the current info div so in here uh, we'll create the uh, date container which will be this this part so uh, it will be a div with a class of uh, date container and in here uh, we'll have a class div with a class of time and it will have an id of time because we need to dynamically change the time in here we'll just have the time of say 12 30. now we need to add this am and pm so to do that we'll create a span with the id of am pm and we'll just enter uh, pm okay and we'll save that now you can see that we have a text here 12 30 pm uh, now we'll create a div with a class of date so class date and id date and this will this will be basically uh, monday 24th may so when we save that we have that here as well then what we need we need this this box so we'll call this uh, weather items or current weather items so uh, in the html file below the date we'll create a div with the class of others and we'll have an id of uh, current weather items okay so in here we'll create a div with a class of uh, weather item and in here we'll have uh, two paragraph tags uh, one for say mm, say humidity the other one will have its value so say 95.2 percentage 
and we'll copy this weather item div okay and we'll paste this multiple times okay and we'll change it to say pressure wind speed yeah that will be nice we'll fill some random value as well okay so those have been added here actually let's let's just change the change the paragraph to uh, div so we have all the all the items that we see in this side now we need uh, these items outside the date container we'll create a new class of uh, place container okay and here we'll create a, a class of time zone it time zone and it will have an id of time zone as well okay and similarly we'll have a new div which will have a class of uh, we, we want to put this uh, latitude and longitude so we'll just give it a id of country and we'll create a class of country and for now let's let's just uh, give it a value of say india so i'll just put i in there later we'll change this to uh, the coordinates but for now let's uh, set it as country we'll uh, say enter the time zone as asia kolkata okay and save that uh, and here you can see asia kolkata has been added now outside the container uh, we'll create this this portion uh, which is the bottom portion so to do that uh, outside the container we will create a new div with the with the class of uh, future forecast in there uh, we'll create another uh, two other divs one for one for the one for today's uh, today's forecast and the other for uh, the next week's whole whole forecast so we'll create class of today with the id of uh, current temp uh, just saying that uh, it's the current temperature and here here, here we'll add an image uh, with the class of w icon and it will have uh, an src but uh, we'll add the src in a bit we just add the alt tag as weather, weather icon okay now we need this uh, date and this portion so we'll create a div with a class of day okay uh, it will have say monday below that we'll create other divs which is called temperature which will, which will show the temperature so say night 25.6 to type degree uh, we'll do and hash 176 and semicolon and celsius and we'll just copy the same line we'll paste that here and we'll change this to day and we'll change this to 35 we'll save that uh, now you can see we have a broken image because we have not added the source uh, we'll just add that in a bit and there is night and day so similarly uh, we need to add these divs as well which is this one so we'll create another another div with the class of weather forecast so in the weather forecast uh, it will have an idea of weather forecast as well so we we'll create an idea of weather forecast and in here we'll basically have the uh, same content here just the order will be different so we'll create a class of weather forecast item okay and in here we'll basically have the same content which is this one 
okay we just paste that here and order it uh, but you can see that here the day is on top so we'll just change this position from here uh, to be on top and we'll save that we have another another one so we'll just change this this to two and we'll have the same thing so we'll just copy paste these uh, multiple times so for now we'll, we'll just keep it like this later we'll we'll dynamically have this data so then we'll change all, all of this anyway now let's jump into the CSS part and uh, style it and make it look, look better so first uh, let's do the asterisk and and set the uh, box sizing to border box and we'll set margin as 0 and we'll give padding as 0 as well okay save that now uh, we'll just change the font first so we'll just go into google fonts fonts.google.com and we'll open poppins so this is the poppins font so if you can't find it you can just search for poppins here and we'll select this style and we'll just click import and copy this uh, import statement from here okay and come into our uh, CSS file and on the top we just add that uh, add, add that statement here uh, at present we have selected only uh, weight of 100 so we'll select the weight of uh, 200, um, 200 400 and 700 okay and in the body what we'll do is we'll set the font family as as poppins sans serif. Save that. So poppins comma sans serif. So we'll save that. Now the font has been loaded here. Uh, now let's uh, add the background image that that was here. This one so uh, this is basically uh, an image from uh, unsplash so i have i already have that uh, url you can select ima any image you want uh, i have already selected the image so i'll just copy paste the uh, url here so i'll just do background and we'll just paste the url here and we'll save that now the background image has been loaded now let's uh, do some styling for the background so we'll set the background repeat as no repeat so background repeat uh, as no repeat then we'll set the background size background size to cover okay uh, now we'll hide the over overflow here so overflow hidden so that scroll is not there anymore and we'll set the height as 100 percentage of the viewport height so it, it takes the whole screen i think that's all we need here now let's style the container so we'll take the container and we'll just give a padding uh, say 20 20 pixel top and bottom and 70 pixel left and right the padding has been added so uh, we'll set the color as white so f f f so the white color has been loaded now we'll uh, select the current info time which is this this much so this much data so we'll just style those part now so say class of current info uh, we we'll just display flex 
and we justify content space between and we'll do flex wrap as wrap okay so what I, what have we done here uh, we have justify content space between means uh, since this current info has uh, two child which is uh, this date container and place container so on displaying flex it will display uh, all the child as a row so this will be one row and this will be so this will be in one column and this will be another column uh, so this has taken uh, the date container has taken place here and it has moved the place container to its side so since we have uh, set the justify content space between uh, it has positioned it such that uh, it takes the whole space between uh, it is on two extremes so now uh, let's uh, let's style the date container so we'll uh, pick the class of date container select the class of time and we'll just set the font size and font weight so we'll set font size as uh, 70 pixel and we'll set font weight as 100 so it's uh, it's thin uh, we do not want this pm to be the spec so uh, we'll reduce the size for that so to do that we'll do date container and we'll take the id of am pm okay uh, we'll reduce the reduce the font size to uh, 30 pixel and we'll just uh, give it a margin left so that there is a, a bit of spacing between uh, the time and time and pm so we'll go a margin of uh, 20 pixel and we'll save that so now it's been styled uh, now let's style the date it's the same thing so since we have a uh, font weight 100 uh, all for uh, for all elements of uh, date container we'll just cut the font weight of 100 and we'll just paste that here save that now we'll select the uh, date here so uh, date container date and we'll set the font size of 30 pixel so it's big enough now let's style uh, this part so we'll select the place container okay and we'll align the text uh, to the other side so we'll text align end so that works now let's align the uh, change the font size and uh, weight of this text so place container dot time zone and we'll set the font size to 30 pixel and we'll set the font weight to 100 okay now let's select the country so we'll do place container dot country and we'll set the font size to 12 pixel so it's very small but we'll increase the font weight so we'll set the font weight as 700 now uh, let's let's style this this one so we'll take the current info we want to take the class of others inside the current info and we'll display a flex now everything is is in a row so we'll do flex direction of of column but we we want these in a in a row so first uh, current info dot others dot weather item so weather item is the class that has uh, this this together so weather item and we'll display flex so now everything is 
in a row and we we'll justify content space between so that it's in the opposite side now uh, let's add a background color and a border to it so we'll set the set the background as rgba rgb is the color and a is the alpha value which which means it has the ability to uh, alter the opacity so we'll we'll give a value of 24 24 and 27 and we'll set the alpha value as 0 0.6 uh, so it's a bit uh, kind of like a transparent not transparent uh, it's a bit translucent so we'll add a padding to it of uh, 20 pixel we have not added the semicolon we just add that and the semicolon here then we'll add a border radius of uh, 10 pixel that's better now let's add a top and bottom margin for this so margin uh, 10 pixel top and bottom and 0 pixel left and right and we have added a small margin to the top and bottom so uh, so we have styled the top portion here we will just add a border radius to to this as well so we will add a border not border radius just the border 1 pixel solid and the color is ee -E. okay so we have added that border as well now let's style uh, the the bottom portion so this portion okay this portion so coming back to the app that we were building and we'll go back go down to the css and we'll select uh, the future forecast so which is this whole dev so we'll take the uh, future forecast class and we'll set the background background as rgba uh, 24 24 27 and 0 0.8 here so that's there now we'll set a padding of 25 pixel uh, we'll set the position not relative we want the position to be fixed at the bottom so we'll set the position as fixed and bottom as zero let's see why this is happening because we have put future forecast in the div of container we do not want that so we'll just take the future forecast div and cut the whole thing out of container and paste it outside the container we'll save that so now it's outside the container and it's stuck at the bottom but it's it's in a column way so we'll change that in a bit so we'll do display flex and we'll set the color white so everything is white we'll set the width as 100 percentage so it takes the whole width we'll align items center and justify content center uh, so we have made everything centralized now uh, we want to display flex this also so why we are seeing it like this is because uh, here you can see this is a div and the other div is weather forecast so on displaying flex this will be one column and this will be another column so uh, that's why it's displaying all the content in this div as a single column we need to change that uh, so to do that uh, we'll do future forecast dot uh, weather forecast so weather forecast is basically uh, this div this one so weather forecast and we will just display flex so now everything is is in a row now uh, let's add the icon so it looks odd without the icon for the uh, for the api we were we are going to use the 
we're going to use the open weather map api so we'll use the icons that comes with the open weather app uh, we are not going to build custom uh, weather uh, weather icons so in order to have the best weather app it uh, it would be best if we we could uh, design our own icons and have them uh, in the app uh, that would change uh, the whole thing but we'll just use uh, the open weather app uh, icon so the icon url is given here uh, so based on this value which is the 10d value uh, or this icon value the image changes and this 2x is the size of the image so uh, we'll just copy this uh, this icon URL from here and we'll just paste that in all the SRC we'll, we'll make it dynamic but for now uh, we'll just uh, have it like this we'll select all the SRC from here and do SRC equal to and paste the image icon there and we'll save that so now we have the image icons here okay now we need to style them so first let's style the uh, this this one which is the which is the uh, which is today's uh, forecast so about the weather forecast tab we'll do uh, future forecast today and we'll display flex and we'll align item center justify content center now we'll style the uh, the day here we'll select the class of future forecast dot today dot day and we'll add a padding of 5 pixel top and bottom and 15 pixel left and right we'll give it a background and we'll give it a value of 3c 3c 4 4 so you can see that there is a, a small background there we'll add a, a border to it as well so uh, i mean border radius of uh, 50 pixel so it's a bit rounded we'll uh, do text align center okay that's all we want for the for day now let's set, set the size for the temperature so uh, we'll do future forecast dot today dot temp and we'll set the font size to 40 pixels we'll add a specific media query so that it matches the uh, matches the size uh, of the screen so here we'll in the to, uh, in the in the today class we'll add another div so, uh, why we are adding is because we want monday on top of this night and day so we'll add a div of uh, others with a class of other and we'll just cut this part here and we'll paste that here and we'll save that so now we have all those things uh, in a in a column so we'll jump back into the style.css and for now let's change the font size to say 20 pixel padding top of uh, 15 pixel we'll change these uh, these values and we'll make it responsive so that on different screen sizes uh, the font size will be different but uh, we'll do that after we have completed uh, completed the majority styling part so now let's uh, style these here so uh, we we'll take the uh, weather forecast and we'll take the weather forecast item okay and we'll display flex and we'll set the flex direction as column we'll set the align items center and justify content center so it's centralized and we'll add a margin uh, of left and right so we'll set the margin of 0 pixel top and bottom and 10 pixel left and right so there is a bit of spacing between them so now let's now style this and this part so dot 
weather forecast dot weather forecast item dot day and we'll add a padding of a 5 pixel top and bottom and 15 pixel left and right and we'll add a background as well same as that we added to the day which is 3c 3c 44 and we'll add a border radius to this as well of say uh, 50 pixel so it's a bit rounded and we'll uh, text the line center okay uh, now uh, we'll take this one here so we'll just copy this paste it and we'll select the temp class and we just want to set the font weight as 100 so it's light so we have completed the uh, majority of uh, all the styling now let's check the responsiveness uh, but before that let's uh, let's add the border radius to these as well so uh, in the weather forecast item so we'll add a border radius of uh, one pixel solid of e -E -E. No, it's not border radius it's border yeah uh, and we'll add a border radius of 10 pixel and we'll add a padding as well of uh, 5 pixel and maybe 15 pixel yeah 15 looks good if we move to the big screen you can see uh, it looks a lot better than how it looked on small screen uh, and we'll make uh, if you can see here when we made all this changes here the icon on the left side uh, got all the way in and it's not scrollable since overflow is hidden so we need to make it scrollable horizontally so we'll do that while making this responsive so let's open uh, uh, the developer tools and switch to mobile view and we'll minimize it so this is iphone 10 so you can see that the alignment is uh, not quite quite right and the bottom portion is not scrollable so we'll add, uh, type the do the media query so at media only screen uh, and max width of 730 pixel every screen size which has width less than 7, uh, 730 pixel will will be affected here okay so first uh, let's make this part scrollable so we'll select the future forecast tab and we'll set the justify content to start so that it's in the beginning so if you can see here it was in the middle earlier but now it's in this in the start here and we'll align items uh, to none okay and we'll enable the scroll on the uh, y-axis so overflow y scroll okay so now the bottom portion is scrollable so now we need to arrange this part and tweak the font size on this so uh, basically what i'll do is we'll i'll just change all the font sizes for all the div that's all we'll, we'll be doing and aligning to send uh, div so now uh, i'll just do that so we have uh, changed all the all the font size for all the elements in here and we have reduced the padding of the container so that we can fit uh, this portion here in the top itself so as you can see uh, we have made it uh, kind of responsive and it adapts to any screen sizes so now uh, we need to uh, show data from the uh, weather api so we need to call the weather api and load the dynamic data from there so how can we do that so for that we jump into the uh, script.js file and we'll do the same now so first let's get all the all the elements uh, into the 
into this uh, script.js file what we'll do is we'll do we'll get the uh, time time element so time l equal to document dot get element by id and the id is time const date element is document dot get element by id it's the id is date the current weather items so it's const current weather items element is document dot get element by id uh, current web the items uh, then the, there is the time zone so cons time zone equal to document dot get element by id and we get the time zone then there is the country element so which is the la longitude and latitude so we will do that come document dot get element by id of country then uh, we have the weather forecast element which is which is all the future forecast so weather forecast element equal to document dot get element by id weather forecast then we have the current weather forecast which is const current temperature element is equal to document dot get element by id of current temp okay so we will we will order all the all the elements from here into the in the html file to everything in this uh, javascript file now we need to uh, update all of the data so we can update the date time uh, without the use of uh, the weather api so first we will we'll do that so we'll create an array uh, we'll create a set interval function so a set interval function is a is a function which can be called uh, after a particular interval so it will call continuously until the uh, interval is cleared so we'll uh, set the interval and we'll will not clear the interval uh, instead it, it will keep calling it till infinity so uh, we'll call this function every one second so this set interval function is called uh, instantaneously and it has a callback function so this function will be called every one second everything that we write inside here so what we'll do is we'll create a variable called time and we'll use the uh, date class uh, in the browser so this will give a, a unix date now we need to format this date to get the different different uh, values so for month we'll take time dot get month okay similarly const day equal to time dot get date const day equal to time dot get day const hour 
equal to time dot get hours const minutes equal to time dot get time dot get minutes okay now we need uh, we have the date month day this hour here uh, we will give a 24 hour clock so we need we need the 12 hour clock so const hours in 12 hour format equal to if r greater than or equal to 13 what we'll do is we'll get the modulus by 12 and we set that value as the hour okay now we need uh, if it is am or pm so the same thing const am pm equal to if hours greater than or equal to 12 then pm else am okay so we have all the values now let's set the uh, time and date okay so we have uh, we have the time and date element here so we'll do time element uh, dot in the html equal to we'll do string con uh, concatenation so hours in 12 hour format uh, plus uh, minutes plus plus uh, we need to add the uh, span which is this one okay we just copy this here and bring it here we'll do template editor and we'll paste that here and we'll do dollar curly basis then we'll put am pm here okay we'll save that nothing is happening we're getting hours not defined so where did we put hours okay hours not defined so we'll just copy r and put that here so it's now 4 54 pm so we have updated the time here now we need to update date so date element dot in the html equal to uh, we need the day and date but here I, uh, we are getting values from 0 uh, to 11 in case, case of month and uh, 0 to 6 in case of uh, in case of date so we need to convert those values into days and months uh, like this one so we'll create an array of days uh, so basically it will be Sunday Monday Tuesday okay similarly we need uh, an array of months Jan. now we need to use this months uh, to show the value here so uh, the days will be uh, in the days array we'll just call this day here so the array of day will be the date uh, day here and we'll add a comma and we'll add the date say it's the 24 we add a space 
and then we'll uh, use the months array and we'll pass the month that we get uh, from here okay if we save that so we have updated the time and the date has been updated okay so for now let's change this to 25 and see initially it will be 25 then it becomes 24 so the 24 we are getting from here okay so we have updated the date and time now we need to get all the other data from the api so uh, to do that uh, we have to go into the weather api uh, i just maximize the screen okay so in the weather api uh, you have to go into this link and uh, you can just uh, you know sign up with your email and verify your email on on the email verification you can go here into the api keys go into the api keys here so you can see the api key key here so you just copy that and bring that into uh, into the url uh, into the script.js file here and we set the api key value here so we need that value we need this value for all the api calls that we'll be making and in the api portion you can see all the all the documentation cor uh, corresponding to uh, the weather api so we'll the api we'll be using is called one call api so this call uh, this api has a, a daily forecast and the current forecast and we can use minute forecast hourly forecast all those uh, things can be uh, get from this one in one single api so we'll be using this api uh, for our uh, for our call today so uh, we'll just open the api doc and we'll scroll back you can see that uh, there is the url that we can call so we'll just copy this one so we need the latitude longitude and the part that we want to exclude so in our case we need the current part we do not need minute or hour but we need daily so we'll just exclude minutely and hourly data so we'll just add those part here and we'll concatenate the api key here and we'll just call the uh, uh, use the fetch api to call and get this data coming back into our application to call the api we'll we need we'll, we'll create a function of okay uh, to get the weather data as i said we need the latitude and longitude so we'll use the uh, navigator uh, to get the geolocation and based on the geolocation we'll get the latitude and longitude and based on that uh, we'll do the api call so uh, we'll use the navigator dot geolocation dot get current position so this uh, this will have a success callback uh, callback and error callback and options so we'll just use the success callback so if if it is success then uh, we want we want to call we want to call this function so we need to get the longitude and latitude we'll just uh, log what this success has so we'll do console.log success okay and we'll just save that it's nothing here we have not called the function so we just call that function too so now we'll just open our app here so if you see the console you can see that there is a geolocation and in the chords we have the latitude and the longitude values so we'll use those here so it's coming as five five four we do not want this to look like this we'll change that so we'll just uh, come back here 
and you will use uh, object destructuring so let latitude longitude equal to success dot calls so this will give get us the latitude and longitude values now we can call the uh, api which is the fetch api uh, to get the weather weather data so we can open the uh, documentation we just copy this part here okay and we'll come here and type fetch and we'll use backticks and we'll just paste that here and we'll put dollar sign in front of amp uh, curly braces and copy the latitude and paste the latitude here same thing again put the dollar sign copy the longitude paste the longitude here and put the dollar sign here and we'll use the api api key variable now we need to add the uh, uh, exclude part so we'll just remove this and we'll add hourly and minute okay so we have excluded those parts so this will return a promise so we'll do dot then uh, response rest dot json and this will again return a promise so dot then again and we'll get the data and for now we'll just console dot log the data okay so we open the app here go to inspect go to console you can see we have called the uh, api which is the weather api and we have gotten a response so we have got the time zone we have got uh, the daily data here and we have got the current data so we'll just uh, use this data uh, to load all the data here so here we'll do we'll call in the function say show weather data and we'll pass the data here and beneath here we'll create that show show weather data function okay okay so to show this humidity wind speed and uh, pressure the data comes from uh, the current okay so we will use the object destructuring uh, to do that but before that if you see here uh, the fields like which is a temperature value it is coming in uh, kelvin value we do not want that we want it to come in degree celsius so uh, if we go into the one call api and scroll down you can see we can pass units which is optional uh, so when we uh, if we scroll down a little bit more and if you see that uh, default it will be kelvin so if we want celsius we have to pass metric in unit so in the api call here what we'll do is we'll put and and we'll put uh, units i think it was units yeah units and uh, we'll put metric so that we get everything uh, in degree celsius okay we have gotten the response and if you see now we have 42 degree celsius or 32 degree celsius yeah that's that's more like it okay so now we need to get all the all the data from from the current tab which is humidity pressure wind speed and the sunrise and sunset time let's get the uh, humidity so we'll do humidity uh, 
प्रेशर सनराइज सनसेट एंड विंड स्पीड फ्रॉम डेटा डॉट सो वील गेट ऑल दी डेटा फ्रॉम फ्रॉम दी करंट करंट प्रोसेस सो नाउ वी नीड टू शो ऑल दोज थिंग्स इन हियर सो टू डू दैट वील गोइंग टू द इंडेक्स डॉट एच टी एम एल ओके एंड हियर वील जस्ट टेक ऑल ऑफ दिस एंड cut them from here and save that and go into the script dot js okay and we'll we'll create a template editor and paste them here for now so we have something to do before that so here we'll take the uh, current weather element items and we'll paste that here and we will set the inner html as this string so paste cut from here and paste it here okay and now we need to change this thing so humidity is same but the value is dollar curly braces on humidity so if we save that now you can see we are getting 72 percentage which was which is from the api now we need uh, we have the pressure so we do the same dollar curly braces and we replace the pressure and same for the wind speed as well wind speed so now uh, say if we we need to add the sunrise and sunset as well so how can we do that so we'll just copy this div couple more times and we change this to sunrise and we change this to sunset okay so if we if we now pass sunrise here directly you can see we are getting this unix time code so we do not want that we need to format format this time so best way to we can format this time is uh, using the uh, moment package so we'll go into google and we'll search for uh, cdn js moment Okay, so we get the CDN JS moment dot JS. We we'll open that, and we'll copy this min dot JS, and we'll come into the index dot HTML. Go all the way down, and above the script dot JS, we'll paste this here, and we'll save that. And now when we come into uh, the script dot JS, and uh, when we when we remove this, and we we can do. we can call a moment library so we'll do window dot moment not comment moment and we can pass sunrise here dot format and we can pass the format as string so we need hh and then and a so when we save that we are getting 12 am so we'll we'll fix that so we'll just copy that here and paste it here as well and we'll change it to sunset okay we are getting 12 am and 1201 am so we need to since it is a uh, unix time stamp we need to change it Uh, we need to multiply it uh, by thousand to get the correct time. So multiply it by thousand and stay. You get the sunrise is at six o six o one a.m. and the sun sunset is at six forty two a.m. 
Okay, so we have loaded all the all the data here. So coming back to down here. So if you can see, we, we are not able to scroll this bottom portion. That's because we had uh, set uh, this to only only till 730 pixel and this is greater than 730 pixel. Uh, so we need to scroll for this as well. So we'll create another uh, another media query. So we'll add media only screen and max width thousand pixel and we we'll copy the future forecast from here and we'll paste that here okay so now the scroll is working here as well okay so let's jump back to uh, strip.js and uh, make this dynamic as well so this uh, all this data will be inside the uh, daily portion so here inside the daily the zeroth position will be the uh, will be today's data and the other seven is uh, is for the next day so we can loop through that daily array and have uh, it render the things here so we can do data dot daily uh, dot for each uh, say d comma index so day so the zeroth index will be for the for that particular day so if idx equal to zero we have one set of uh, design and all the other have the other set so we can create a variable called other day forecast okay and set it to empty string and for every other day what we can do is we can the other say other day forecast plus equal to which is the string concatenation and we can send the template literal and we can go here copy the weather forecast item from here and paste that here okay and we can set the date and time here so since we have moment already uh, installed we can copy from here and paste it here and we can change the uh, sunset we do not want the sunset now we we want the day so we can say uh, day dot date dt element has a date so we can use that and we can get the particular format using this ddd of moment so we we'll just save that it's not loaded because we have not added this to uh, the dom but we will do that in a bit okay now for the icon you can see that uh, here the daily inside the weather you have an icon called 10 d so 10d is the same as this one here so as this change so as this icon change we can change this dynamically here so what we can do is we can take this from here and we will do day dot weather of zero dot icon okay save that and that's done now we need the temperature so here we can uh, take it from fields like say morning and day and night okay so same thing we'll copy the we'll do uh, dollar curly basis 
and we'll do day dot fields no, we'll just uh, put the temperature from here not the field type we'll put temperature dot night okay we'll copy that here paste that here and temperature dot day. <coughs> okay still we have not added this to the dom so uh, after the for each loop we can go down here and what we can do is uh, we can get the weather forecast element okay the cast element dot inner html and we can set it as the other day forecast okay and we save that and come back here you can say that uh, night is 24 degrees Celsius, day is 30, and so on and so forth. So every value is different, and we have loaded all this data from the API. So we need to still change this part. So that's why we have uh, index zero is equal to here. So we'll do the do the same thing, which is get the current temperature element okay and we'll paste it here and we'll set the inner html as such we'll go up here and we we'll copy this from here and paste it here okay now we need the icon so we can get the icon from here which is day dot weather of zero dot zero we'll just replace that tmd from here maybe increase the size to 4x maybe we can do that and we can change the temp night temperature and we'll change the day as well now we need to change the day so it's the same as this one and paste and save that and so we have changed the values but you can see that there are some issues in the styling it's not quite okay uh, we have just changed the uh, font size for this uh, this one here and we have added a small black background color which uh, with an alpha uh, to make it a little more pop and we have changed the overflow excess hidden because uh, when overflow y was scrolled you can see there was a, a scroll bar here so that was not very good looking so uh, one uh, few more things uh, it was remaining was one, one we have to change this here so uh, we'll go back here and we'll just set that which is time zone element equal to time zone dot your html equal to uh, data dot time zone and we need to uh, show the latitude and longitude here so we'll do country element dot in our html equal to data dot lat plus North space plus data dot law plus east. Save that and see we are showing the latitude and longitude here. Then one more thing which was uh, missing is uh, when we have five or five, say five five, uh, we need to show that it's five uh, colon zero five and not just uh, just five so we can change that here in the time element you can check if if minutes we just wrap it in, a, in braces and we'll check if minutes less than 10 and if that's true 
will set 0 and concatenate with minutes else we will just have minutes okay since we do not have we do not have time to wait for that we'll just do that for the hours as well we'll just wrap this in the braces as well and we'll check if this is less than 10 and if this is true then we'll concatenate 0 with uh, hours in 12 hour format else we'll just pass hours in 12 hour format save that you can see there is 505 5.37 so we are done with the HTML CSS uh, part you can see that we have all the data here and it's it's pretty responsive you can see there is a, a scroll bar here okay so now uh, we need to deploy this so we can deploy it into uh, Netlify so we we'll just open uh, our app.netlify so in the last video we had created this account and we had uh, deployed a, a site here we'll just click on site and want to deploy a site without connectivity drag and drop the output folder here so we'll do this one here so we'll we'll open the output folder and we'll just drag and drop the output folder here and it's uploading the site has not yet been deployed and the site is deployed so if you click on this link class for location because you have to give a location uh, for the api to call so we'll just allow that and the api gets called and the data is loaded in the next video we'll convert this this web app into a react native app so if you're interested in that uh, hit subscribe and see you guys in the next week